China's crypto yuan testing program or pilot program is advancing very rapidly. It has moved from a tier two or tier three city, and it is now progressing from around $300 million worth of transactions per day to Beijing and Shanghai in the not too distant future. Now, before people start anointing this as the next world reserve currency, there are extremely large major hurdles that have to be achieved that the Chinese Communist Party does not seem interested in achieving, especially for foreigners. So while it is true that China's economy is doing very well lately, I think a lot of those GDP numbers are phony. So yes, China's economy is doing well. I think it's also embellished about how well it's doing. And beneath the surface, there are a lot of major issues with China's economy. One of those major issues has to do with how quickly the M2 is growing. So China has actually, and most people do not know this, their M2 is growing faster than even the US's M2 is growing. And also, there is a massive amount of dollar denominated debt that is being issued both with outside of China with the Belt and Road Initiative and inside of China again in 2020 with the amount of dollar denominated debt having a near record high in 2020 issued inside China. There is also that recently came out with a Bloomberg article, an enormous amount of bond defaults from Chinese state-owned enterprises and others. So a lot of this foreign direct investment is from other governments and large corporations or billionaires like Ray Dalio and Wilbur Ross. And trust me when I say this, the average Joe or Jane does not get the same treatment when they invest in China as an investor, as a foreigner, that a billionaire with special access does. And Ray Dalio bragged about this in his book, Principles. In fact, I think there was an entire chapter on all the special inside access deals he got in China, and he's currently doing a promotional tour talking about that. Now let's go back to some of the major hurdles for China getting the world reserve currency. It's possible, but it's probably gonna take years, at least historically, about the transition from one country to another for a world reserve currency. Now, normally for one country to get a world reserve currency, a lot of experts talk about a deep bond market, but there's other things that are required. And if you look at the British Empire, you look at the US getting the world reserve currency, having a court system with contract law, so respecting private property rights, having rule of law, these are things that are not really that well respected inside China. So buying real estate in China, you get a 75 year lease and it is difficult for foreigners compared to people inside China. So private property rights are very dicey. And as a foreigner investing in China, unless you have special access as a large corporation where the rules can constantly change still, and there's intellectual property theft, or you're a billionaire like Ray Dalio or Wilbur Ross, you're not going to get the same types of deals, the same type of treatment, and the Chinese court system for settling contract law, for settling private property rights, is not good compared to the US. The US still has, for now at least, a much better court system at settling private property disputes compared to countries like China. So one of the things, major things, two of the major things, excuse me, for a world reserve currency, besides having a deep bond market, is respecting private property rights, including private property rights for foreigners and rule of law. And the Chinese Communist Party has not hinted that they're open to these things yet. Now, recently it's come out that China is planning on having a domestic currency with the crypto yuan. So one that's gonna be highly inflated, highly manipulated, elites inside China, the Chinese Communist Party elites in the government and the billionaires are still gonna launder money out of the country into other currencies like the dollar, the euro and others, and try to continue to buy assets, buy their businesses, buy real estate. This has been going on, crypto yuan or not, for a very, very long time, for decades. And while China has already voluntarily had a cashless society, and as people pay on WeChat Pay or Alipay, the crypto yuan is a different type of beast. 
So the other part of this is China, like I said, plans on having two currencies to try to deal with Triffin's dilemma. And so that they're gonna have an internal currency and then an external currency for foreign exchange rates. Now there are major issues with trying to do this. So in theory, this might sound good. In practice, I think there's gonna be a lot of problems because historically, normally with a world reserve currency, when they changed hands in the past, now for the last 40 or 50 years, we've been on a full fiat currency a global fiat currency standard, a dollar standard, when the last vestiges of the international gold standard were severed in 1971. But normally, historically, with a world reserve currency, there is convertibility, which if you're not familiar with that, that means that physical gold leaves the country. And I have not seen any hints that the Chinese Communist Party, the People's Bank of China, any of the economic and political elites running the Chinese economy are interested in a lot of physical gold leaving China. Now, maybe this will change in the not too distant future, but as of now, and I've been studying China for years, I have not seen any hints of that. And we're starting to see demand for physical gold in China pick up again in January, probably because the Chinese, the Chinese economy is doing well with exports with N95 and other medical equipment because I don't really see signs that the US consumer and the European Union consumer is spending that much. And also Indian demand for physical gold in January looks like it's starting to come back as well. But the other thing with the international, the foreign version of currency, and the People's Bank of China has been doing this, and I know this because I've spoken, and you can go back into my archives from the last couple of years with past interviews with hedge fund manager Tavi Costa, who's also a listener to the show and a friend of mine. Hopefully, I'll get him back on in the not-too-distant future for another interview soon as I have my new laptop set up and I'm recording on this. But Tavi shared a story where he tried to short the yuan, the dollar-yuan pair, and his counterparty on the trade, and this was a shocker to me because I've never heard of this. This is extremely uncommon. So his counterparty on the trade when he was trying to short the yuan in the past a number of years ago was the People's Bank of China. So it is not normal at all. It is perverse. It is weird to have a central bank as a counterparty on foreign exchange. So that is not opening up your capital markets. That is not opening up your economy. The games that the Chinese Communist Party has played for years where they tried to lure capital in a lot of capital, foreign direct investment, investments into Chinese stocks, investments into Chinese government bonds, Chinese state-owned enterprise bonds, into municipal bonds in Xinjiang, other things. And then the rules are historically, over the last couple decades, they're changed, screwing over the foreign investor. And this has been going on for a very long time. So unless that changes, unless the People's Bank of China and the Chinese Communist Party allows convertibility, allows capital flight eliminates a lot of those capital controls the odds of china getting a world reserve currency quickly even with a crypto yuan are not as high as people think so that's my opinion on this matter i have a number of articles if you want to read them more about foreign direct investment into china recently and how predictions about how china's economy is going to overtake the u.s in 2028 so that timeline has moved up because of how china's economy has rebounded but again i would caution because of china china's economic data and while china's economy is doing well i do not think that it is doing nearly as well as the data from the chinese communist party claims because in the past they knew 12 months or more in advance what their gdp was going to be and i think the numbers are totally fraudulent here so yes, things are better in China with their economy. They've rebounded quickly, but I do not think the numbers are nearly as good. And also the other major problem, and I've talked about this in the past, is that there is still, according to the person below Xi, second most powerful person in China below Xi, that there is 600 million adult Chinese that are only making about $150 per month. And that was before the pandemic started. So it's probably even lower now. So to wrap things up in this short little video, China is progressing with their crypto yuan pilot program. They've moved from a smaller city up to Beijing and Shanghai now and will track their progress. However, I think it is enormously overblown 
that China is going to get the world reserve currency quickly unless they allow gold convertibility or and or they improve their private property rights for foreigners and also their rule of law. So those are the main things that people need to watch out for. And I don't see, in, in fact, in China, unfortunately, things are headed in the opposite direction. Now, there is a lot of foreign capital going into China. China's bond market has gotten a lot of capital in the last six months. Chinese stocks have also benefited. China is accumulating a massive amount of commodities and not buying new, uh, any net U.S. treasuries. But those things have to change. So rule of law private property rights for foreign and domestic investors, and then also convertibility if they allow gold. Because I see a lot of people still predicting about a gold-backed crypto yuan, and I did a short video on that, and my thoughts are still the same. It's not going to work because the Chinese Communist Party has not shown that they're interested in a convertibility, allowing a lot of physical, physical gold to leave the country and that is what has happened with past successful gold standards in the British Empire, in the U.S., and throughout financial history.